Hello YouTube, flashlight enthusiast here. This is the Armitech Prime C2 Pro Warm White Edition that is in my EDC rotation for quite some time. Actually, I did a modification on this one because the stock emitter was a little bit thin shifty despite this honeycomb nice TIR optics. Inside, for now, there is the XHP 50.3 high intensity 4500K 96 CRI source directly from Mauser. But, well, there is something new coming. Because this is the new Prime C2 Pro Max with upgraded battery size and much more power thanks to the XHP 70.2 HD emitter. And yes, finally we get an EDC flashlight from Armitech that can produce around 4000 lumens from a single emitter inside not TR optics but a smooth deep reflector. Is it any good and can it really replace any of these lights in my EDC rotation? Well, let's find out. In Poland, we are lucky because we have a local distributor of Armitech flashlights. And this time Wojtek from Armitech Compiel did not disappoint offering an Armitech Prime C2 Pro Max in warm white edition first before offering it cool white emitter. So I sourced it directly from this website and it came really quickly, which I highly appreciate. So inside the box you will find a flashlight wrapped in this nice holster and a bunch of accessories including the proprietary magnetic charging cable, some nice quality olive paracord lanyard with adjustable length, two spare o-rings in case you need a replacement, last but not least a plastic converter from 18650 to 21700 in case you like to use a smaller cell in an emergency. The holster itself is of nice quality with tight velcro on the front but also some velcro and button on the rear so that you can attach it to both your belt and molly backpack. Here is the metal D-ring as well. And the holster itself is made out of a stretchy Cordura fabric that can accommodate this flashlight easily without any issues. So it's a really nice quality holster. Armitech obviously also includes the user manual inside the package. For me personally, Armitech has always been the highest standard of build quality and finish and I have to tell you that with this newest Prime C2 Pro Max, it isn't an exception. This characteristic matte finish with chalk-like structure gives you great grip and anti-slip feature without an knurling physically present on the battery tube. Everything just feels so smooth and premium here, but the downside of this analyzation is that you can really leave some marks with your fingernails that can be removed by a swipe of a finger. I think worth mentioning is that I can feel some sharpness here on the cooling fins, however, no problem whatsoever here. So we've got some heat dissipation features here, the single switch that will give you access to both simple and advanced UI, some nice crenulated bezel with some markings with brightness for the CT and is it warm or cool white and some serious number and hot surface warning. And here on the business end we've got deep smooth reflector glass with green anti-reflective coating and inside surprisingly we do have an older emitter, the XHP 70.2 high density in 4000K. I'm really surprised that they didn't go for the 0.3 high emitter here. For some reasons they chose the proven old one. And if you look closely, the reflector has like three or four different surface levels, which gives you this nice even beam with really minimal tint shift. As expected from the flashlight that can withstand a 10 meter fall and 10 meter depth water immersion, the head and battery tube is glued here on this one, so you can only unscrew surprisingly the bezel for a meter swap, obviously, and uh, the tail cap. So the tail cap obviously features this famous magnetic charging from Armitech, however, it's not the all light way that you can only use the proprietary batteries. 
this system is actually pretty smart and can offer you the benefits of both worlds. So unscrewing the tail cap will reveal the set of two O-rings that gives you this amazing water resistance and unanodized threads with nigel on from the factory here on the tail cap nice thick gold plated spring and inside we've got the included armitech 5000 mAh power battery 21700 cell format and as you can see it is flat top and not nearly longer than the standard unprotected 21700 cell like the samsung 50s so you can use your regular 21700 cells inside this flashlight without any problem. Surprisingly enough, I found out that the battery tube inside is unanodized and down there you also have a second spring so that shock recoil is not a problem here. Spring down there, unprotected flat top battery and you can still charge this inside a flashlight without any double contacts like in Olight. How could they do that? Prime Studio Pro Max is supplied with the included magnetic charging cable which features different battery indicator. So the thing you do is just plug it in USB charging source and then the green light indicator lights up. Then you just plug it in and as you can see, we've got some blinking red light indicating the charging error. In Armitex, you have to unscrew the tail cap one quarter of a turn to initiate the charging. As you can see, this one is already fully charged, but if it doesn't, it will show red light here to indicate the charging in process. So basically, this feature still enables the water resistance in place while charging your flashlight, but unfortunately you cannot operate it because you disengage the contact physically. And during my testing I found out that the charging is at one arm current, so it's surprisingly slow for 2023 standard. So while magnetic charging is by far definitely convenient for most users, I wish it was a little bit faster. Luckily, you can always charge this battery in a standard charger with, for instance, 3 amps current. So many questions about this, so let's check whether it is secure in your pocket. Hmm. Really nothing happens as you can see. Safe and secure. Here is your quick size comparison, the Prime C2 Pro Max, the Wizard C2 Pro Max, the Prime C2 Pro regular 18650 battery edition and last but not least the D4K, so 21700 cell just like in those two, however this is the ordinary ADC that you would like to call it that way. But it is still thinner than the beloved SP33S from Sofirn with similar head size. So people often ask me what's the difference between a standard and the pro version of the Prime, Wizard etc. So basically what you get in a pro version is better driver performance with flat output regulation, also some different UI that can be switched from simple to advanced like in Unreal giving you more features, a slightly more intuitive user interface in my view, but also this multifunctional battery and thermal indicator under the switch. And it makes sense especially in a flashlight that you hold entirely in your hand and you can look at it anytime. So there is this dim green light whenever you turn on a flashlight acting as a location beacon or it can also be turned on when the flashlight is off to indicate where the flashlight is located. Then when the flashlight is cool and runs smooth and steady it's also indicated by a green light blinking under the switch. When the flashlight gets a little bit overheated it can turn to orange and when the flashlight is definitely overheated and starts to step down it will indicate in red light blinking under the switch. The orange and red will also indicate your approximate battery voltage when the flashlight is running to let you know that you should probably charge it or replace the batteries. 
So by default, the Primacy 2 Pro Max comes in a standard simple UI from the factory and then one click for on, one click for off is pretty obvious. Then you can hold the switch from off to enter the lowest moonlight mode and then hold the switch to access the second lowest mode and then hold again will cycle through the loop of three different modes, main 1, main 2 and main 3 etc. And then double tap for turbo output, double tap again to go to the previously used mode and as you can see there is no triple click whatsoever, so no strops in this particular UI, so quite simple, effective, you can access your lowest mode with the shortcut, double tap for turbo and three modes in the loop, quite standard for most users. In terms of the advanced UI, we get access to four different mode groups, each containing two or three different modes, can be accessed when you unscrew the tail cap one quarter of a turn and then screw it down holding the switch so basically because of the memory of each mode we have those shortcuts not to be stuck in strobe mode when we turn on the flashlight again so basically we've got standard operation one click for on one click for off holding the switch will go into the lowest mode then obviously we can hold the switch to cycle between different modes in the one group However, if we want to go into the medium mode group with double tap from on or off, then we got medium one, medium two, medium three cycle by holding the switch. And then when, if we are in a medium group, we can go back into the firefly mode group by double clicking again. And now we are in the firefly mode group. Double tap again, we cycle back into the medium mode. Then triple click from on or off to go into the turbo output and then holding the switch will advance through different modes here, turbo one and turbo two in this instance. Four clicks, we we'll go into the strobe mode group. Here is the beacon, standard strobe mode and second beacon. But as I mentioned, if we turn off the flashlight, flashlight will remember us to slow. So when we turn it on by single click, it will go back to the strobe mode. If we don't want to do that, we have shortcuts for turbo output or medium output or firefly output, then just simply double tap and then here we go. So basically that's, that's pretty much it. You can also cycle from the lowest to the highest mode by holding the switch and holding then flashlight will cycle until the turbo one is applied. Personally, for me, this kind of UI is quite intuitive and gives you this order in your different mode groups. However, I know that for many users, it is still much to learn when it comes to Armitech UI. So that's why I'm happy that they're giving you the choice of simple and advanced UI. I wish the thermal limit was also different in two of those groups. I mentioned this beacon light under the switch, the green one that will act as a location beacon too. Turn it on, you have to unscrew the tail cap one quarter, then hold the switch, then screw it down and unscrew it swiftly, and then when you screw it down again, to deactivate the beacon or return to the simple UI, do exactly the same procedure. There's one thing that really pisses me off with this flashlight and the question why Armitech did not use the domeless LED here. As you can see on the footage, we've got a really bad donut hole in the center of the hotspot. Moreover, while everything is pure 4000K and yellowish, the center of the hotspot is actually cool whitish. And I believe it can be easily fixed by incorporating the XHP 70.3 high intensity LED or de-doming the original one or maybe using more orange peel reflector instead of the smooth one. So for me this is really a huge drawback because that's when you really spot in the forest or in outdoors that really starts to be visible from 50 centimeters and, and more. Here are my lumen measurements of the Prime C2 Pro Max on the stock emitter. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. 
Alright, so here is the runtime graph of the highest mode, so Turbo 2 on an included 5000 mAh battery. As you can see, we've got over 4000 numbers and start and a solid 1 minute and 32 seconds runtime before a slow step down over the course of 20 seconds to around 954 lumen level, with flashlight head achieving only 43 degrees Celsius, so quite warm but definitely not too hot. As you can see, the output is slightly rising from the beginning, however, this is definitely not an issue here and you will not see it with your naked eyes. So then, as always from Armitech, we've got excellent flat output regulation with perfectly flat line and flashlight actually was able to sustain around 962 lumens with overall runtime of 2 hours and 42 minutes before stepping down to lower modes not to leave you in the dark. As you can see, flashlight body stabilized at 43 degrees Celsius, so this is definitely a conservative thermal limit, however, appropriate for most users. The second highest, Turbo One, again, only included 5000 mAh battery. Here, I've got 1338 lumens at start, and as you can see, we've got perfectly nice, excellent flat output regulation, and flashlight was able to sustain around 1. 1275 lumens with over runtime of 2 hours and 6 minutes before stepping out lower modes. So according to new manual, flashlight should step down from this mode after like 8 minutes to again around 800-900 lumens, however for some reasons it did not and we've got perfectly sustainable almost 1300 lumens. And the flashlight stabilized at 46 degrees Celsius, so still perfectly safe for most users. Last but not least, the highest mode in the medium section, so medium 2. Again, here we've got around 454 lumens at start, and as you can see, we've got perfectly flat output regulation, sustainable 446 lumens with overall runtime of 6 hours and 21 minutes before stepping down to lower modes, not to leave you in the dark, with flashlight body achieving 31 degrees Celsius. So, for your all night escapades, this mode is probably first choice. Despite the weird and ugly looking hotspot with cool whitish center, the beam pattern is actually pretty good and practical. The standard universal beam pattern, shall I call it. We've got nice big hotspot with bright corona and white spill, illuminating everything in front of you and also some distance in front of you. As you can see, I've measured around 25 candela which translates into 317 meters of row for a warm white edition. Should I replace the emitter for XHP 70.3 high intensity 5000K ATCRI, I'll definitely let you know what the results are. As you could see in the runtime graph section the performance is truly spectacular and 4000 lumens at start is definitely a good amount of light for everyday use or walk around the house or even adventure in the forest or mountains. The build quality is definitely superb among other flashlights and the true water and impact resistance is always a plus for those who seek highest standards among their tools. I wish the magnetic charging was a little bit faster as I mentioned during the review, however this flashlight will definitely meet your requirements when it comes to a reliable tool that will illuminate no matter the conditions. With that being said, I can definitely highly recommend the Prime C2 Pro Max to you if you're looking for such a flashlight. I hope you enjoyed the review, if you did, consider hitting the like button and subscribe button to support the algorithm and not to miss any future videos that I release. If you have any questions or personal experience with the Prime C2 Pro Max, please leave your comment below this video. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next one.